And so today's webinar is uh, Something Fishy Programme, a lesson for teachers. And we're delighted to have Catherine Hayes from Inland Fisheries Ireland with us to talk about it. Catherine is a fisheries inspector based in, southern, in the Southern Shannon. She has a master's in fisheries management and a degree in zoology, both from UCC. She's a member of IFI's education and outreach committee and has in, been involved with the Something Fishy programme since its inception. Uh, her favourite part of the Something Fishy programme are the classroom visits and field trips as the pupils and teachers are so enthusiastic. So I'm going to hand you over to Catherine there. She's going to now share her screen. Um, Thanks, Aideen. I hope you can all see that perfectly there now. Um, thanks to all of you who have taken time out of your busy schedules today to join us to learn, hopefully learn something about the Something Fishy program. As Aideen mentioned, I've been involved in the Something Fishy program since it started 16 years ago. And it's one of the events that I look forward to participating in every year. So what is Something Fishy? Something Fishy is an educational program aimed at fifth and sixth classes in primary school. It was developed 16 years ago, like I said, in 2005, and was based around the life cycle of the salmon with lesson plans and activity sheets, and has since evolved to a web-based learning resource available in both Irish and English. This program can be adapted to be delivered to younger classes also. The idea of the Something Fishy program is to teach young children about life in our rivers and why it is so important to conserve and protect them. The program does not only educate and inspire children about our waterways, but is developed in a way for children to understand and appreciate the environment around them. And this will hopefully encourage these children to have a new appreciation for rivers and their ecosystems. Something Fishy is one of IFI's main outreach activities for primary schools. And its appeal is that it's local IFI staff engaging with their local schools to teach them more about the rivers in their areas. The program is broken into three stages, which are lesson plans delivered by you, the teacher, IFI classroom visits and IFI field trips. I will explain more about each of these stages now. Okay. So the first stage are the lesson plans. There are currently eight lesson plans available on the Something Fishy website, and these were developed around the life of a salmon in Irish waters by Blackrock Education Centre, with collaboration from IFI. While exploring the lesson plans, pupils can learn, play, and discover about different aspects of fish life in relation to water, fish, the life cycle of a salmon, fish stocks, angling, conservation of our rivers and lakes, invasive species, and fish as part of the food chain. Special emphasis is also placed on the message of anti-pollution and anti-litter, which is essential in times of declining water quality. A new website is in development and new lesson plans are being created around the themes of rivers, lakes, aquatic safety, coarse fish, invasive fish, sea angling, biosecurity and well-being. All lesson plans are based around the SESE -E curriculum. So here's a snapshot from the Something Fishy website showing all the lesson plans that are available. Each of the current lesson plans has an objective, teacher guidelines and revision material. Some lessons have experiments which can be carried out easily in the classroom, such as creating your own landslide to demonstrate soil erosion, experiments to investigate the different forms of water and a water wasting experiment to help pupils to become more conscious of the need to conserve water and this encourages pupils to be respectful and careful of how much water they use. Here we have pupils from Skull Nave Mora Tullow conducting experiments in their outdoor classroom. And they were very surprised with their findings on soil deposition. Other lessons have activities and one which is much loved over the years is camouflage art. This is where pupils learn about the concept of camouflage and how it helps to protect animals from predators. Pupils can also put their culinary skills to test in the creation of fishy recipes as demonstrated by Matterson National School, Manor Hamilton, 
who discovered that they loved smoked salmon. You, the teacher, can dip in and out of the lessons and cover as much as possible in the time frame provided. The lesson plans are an interactive and interesting way for pupils to learn about the rivers, fish and the environment around them. The next stage is the much anticipated visit of the IFI fishery officer to the classroom. All officers who visit schools are guard vetted and have completed child welfare courses and are trained in IFI's child protection policy. The classroom visit is where IFI and their dedicated officers come into their own. Each river basin district and its fishery officers have evolved their classroom visit over the years with subtle differences between each visit. But all officers are experts in their field and they have the children in the palm of their hands as they teach the pupils and the teachers about the job of a fishery officer and the values of life on the river and the environment. We ask the pupils, do they know who IFI are and what do we do? The answers range from tree huggers to fish police to people who care for the environment to lads who catch fish. Take a moment to see, do you know what we do? So what do we do? IFI officers explain in child appropriate language that we are responsible for ensuring the protection and conservation of Ireland's fisheries resource, the fish and their habitats in both inland waterways and out to a 12 mile limit off the coast. We are also responsible for the management, marketing, development and improvement of our inland fisheries and sea angling resource. We carry out a variety of patrols on rivers, lakes, estuaries, coasts and at sea to enforce legislation and to seize illegal fishing equipment used in poaching. Here you can see examples of sea and estuary patrols carried out in our state-of-the-art delta boats which are custom built for IFI. In our visit to the classroom, we bring some of the equipment we use on the boats, like our life jackets, helmets and dry suits, and allow the pupils to try them on and see what it is like to wear all the gear we must wear at sea. We even devised up a little game called a dry suit race, where we see who is the, who is the fastest at putting on one of the officer's dry suits. We also seize the opportunity here to talk about water safety and the wearing of life jackets when on or near water. We also use kayaks and jet skis to patrol our waterways and the pupils love to hear the officer's stories and see the photographs around their use and they are especially impressed with our jet skis. Patrols are also carried out using modern technologies of long-range spotting scopes, thermal imaging cameras and drones, all of which are very useful in detecting and deterring poaching. We inspect recreational anglers, license holders and commercial fishermen the purpose of these inspections is to ensure that anglers and license holders are in compliance with all the terms of their permits or licenses, including those relating to equipment, bag and size limits. We issue fixed charge penalty notices for minor breaches of legislation and take other more serious breaches of the legislation to court. We ask the pupils if any of them fish or if they know anybody who fishes and encourage them to share their experiences of angling with the class. As you can imagine, some of the stories from the pupils are priceless. IFI has a dedicated team of environmental officers who along with fishery officers protect the habitats and environment that fish need while paying particular attention to water quality and the immediate area surrounding rivers and lakes. Officers carry out inspections on farms, industry, construction and forestry to ensure that there is no pollution or negative impacts arising from these activities. We carry out these inspections to ensure that these industries take account of the need to protect our fisheries and secure the future for fish. In the classroom visit we show the pupils different photos of different types of pollution and discuss with them what happens when a fish kill occurs. We ask them what they could do to protect their local environment. We also discussed the leave no trace principle and some officers might play the leave no trace rubbish timeline game where pupils are asked, where pupils are given pictures of everyday items and are asked to guess how long it takes for the item to break down. 
Can you guess how long it takes for a banana skin and a crisp packet to biodegrade? I'll give you a moment to think about it. A banana skin can take up to two years and a crisp packet can take 80 years to biodegrade. Now we're onto the final stage, the much anticipated and the highlight of the Something Fishy programme, the IFI field trip. This field trip gets the pupils and teachers into an outdoor classroom and reinforces what was learned in the lesson plans. IFI will talk to you, the teacher, and let you know if there is a river close by which is suitable and safe to visit. Every field trip is risk assessed to ensure a safe environment for all involved. As pupils arrive to the river, their footwear is disinfected and the officers give a talk on biosecurity and how to prevent the spread of invasive species. Here on the top left, you can see pupils disinfecting their footwear, but also sanitizing their hands. So we were pre ahead of the COVID game all those years. The message of water safety that was introduced in the classroom visit is reinforced on the riverbank and the fishery officers wear their life jackets at all times and have throw ropes handy just in case. Then the fun stuff starts. A kick sample is collected from the river of the invertebrates that live on the riverbed. The pupils are given bug pots, magnifying glasses and an insect guide that shows the different groups of insects that are either sensitive are tolerant to pollution. And they are asked to be scientists for the day and use the insects to determine water quality. It's amazing to see how captivated that the pupils are by what lives in our rivers. And those who are not so keen on cre creepy crawlies are enthralled by the end of this activity. A macro invertebrate wooden dice has been created by IFI with the IFI logo and five different images of common insects on each side. The pupils can roll the dice and try to find the insect in their tray. The next part of the field trip involves electrofishing. This is where fishery officers get some fish samples from the river and the children have an opportunity to learn how to identify fish and how to hold them correctly so as not to stress them. This activity is very exciting for the pupils as they see young salmon, trout, eels and other fish species up close and they are allowed to touch and feel the caught fish. Both invertebrates and fish are returned without harm to the river they were taken from. If officers haven't played the leave no trace game in the classroom, they might play it on the field trip. Sometimes the river is brought into the classroom when bad weather or unsuitable ground conditions do not allow for easy access to the riverbank. This provides an excellent alternative experience for the pupils. IFI come fully equipped with fish, tanks and kick samples from the local river. And it's not just the pupils who learn on the day. All teachers are equally fascinated and enthralled by what we find in the rivers on our field trips. And some are not as brave as their pupils. To complete your school's involvement in the Something Fishy programme, schools are invited to take part in a competition based on an aspect of their learning and experiences from the programme. The competition format is decided on by IFI and Blackrock Education Centre at the start of the programme. In 2020, we ran a very successful Something Fishy Schools Poetry Competition with the theme, My Life as a Fish, with a total of 197 entries from all over the country. We moved our competition online in order to facilitate the schools during the COVID-19 lockdown. This also meant that instead of a class project, we received individual student entries. The winning poems came from the Shannon and Eastern RBDs and both schools received a hamper of equipment and goodies. Now you've heard all about the programme and I know you're dying to find out how to get involved. In September, October of the academic year, a predetermined number of education centres will advertise the programme to its affiliated schools. The schools complete the application form and if the programme is oversubscribed, then there is a selection process. There are generally 15 spaces available in the programme per education centre. 
Each school is then contacted to let them know if they've been successful and the teacher can start to work through the lesson plans. IFI will contact the school and arrange a date for the classroom visit anytime from November to February. And the field trip usually happens in May or June. I asked one of the teachers who worked through the program in 2019, 2020 for a comment. And these are his words. As regards to Something Fishy program last year, I thought it was really worthwhile. The class enjoyed the lessons and really got on board with the interactive lessons. One funny thing they liked to do was wrap along to the dance music overview of each lesson at the end. Strange, I know, but a good way to recap on the lesson. The fact that they knew someone would be coming to visit the class also gave them a good focus. The visit itself was very successful and the two lads who came were very engaging and interesting for the class. We were really excited about the thoughts of a field trip, so naturally we were disappointed when COVID struck. In 2019-2020, we had 10 education centres and 104 schools signed up. Unfortunately, due to COVID, some of these schools did not get their classroom visit and none of them had their field trip. Hopefully, we can take these schools on the field trip this summer if restrictions allow. So that's all for me. I hope you learned something about the Something Fishy programme and that you will be eagerly awaiting the email from the Education Centre advertising the programme. I would like to thank Rachel O'Malley who helped with the presentation and all of the Education and Outreach Officers. And finally to say that this programme is only possible through the commitment of the many willing staff throughout the country across all functions of IFI. Thank you and back to you Aideen. Thank you, Catherine. That's great. Um, it's lovely to find out all that information and to realise how many, you know, what a huge range of topics there are and how interactive the lesson plans are also. Um, I think we have a few questions that have come up in the question and answer. I'm just going to hand over to my colleagues, uh, Rachel and Rory, who have been busy collating them in the background. And uh, I'll hand over to you there. Thanks, Aidy. Yeah, a couple of questions come in here, Catherine. Um, just, I know you mentioned it briefly, but could you just go through how do we organise a visit to the school? I know. So in September, October, the education centres will send out um, an email to all schools that it's affiliated with. And then there's a selection process if the programme is oversubscribed. Now, not every education centre takes part every year. So we do change education centres as we move on from year to year. So outside of that, what you could do is contact IFI either through our Facebook page, our website or on Twitter. And if some RBDs, so the River Basin Districts are undersubscribed, they may choose to visit your school. So it's always worthwhile popping an email into your local office and then they might be able to come to visit you. Okay, there's another one here come in. Does the teacher have to do all the lessons? Catherine? No, so like I said, it's up to the teacher to dip in and out of the lessons. So we do appreciate the huge amount of work that teachers have to get through in the curriculum itself. But as I said, it's, it's all based on the SESE curriculum. So it does tick some boxes of science, geography and history, but it's up to the teacher to be able to do as much or as little as they can. But when we come to visit for the classroom visit, it's great that you know, the pupils know some of the topics that we're talking about, like camouflage, you know, soil erosion, the water cycle or the life cycle of salmon. But it's totally up to the teacher to be able to do as much or as little as he or she can. Okay, thanks. Christoph, I've a question here. I'm a teacher in a special needs school. Can we get involved? Yes, of course. Um, we have visited, down to the years, we've visited schools with special needs units. And, you know, it's great to see the excitement and the, you know, the positive impact that being able to, you know, even touch the fish have for the children. So we would discuss with you, the teacher, whether or not uh, you'd rather us to bring the fish to you or you'd like the pupils to go down to the bank of the river. So, you know, like I said, we risk everything so that everything is safe for everybody involved. But yes, totally appropriate for special needs schools to get involved. Okay, there's another one come in. Is it only suitable for fifth, sixth class or could it be adapted maybe? Yeah, so the programme can be adapted um, for every age. So you, the teacher, are very well able to adapt any lesson plans that you get for your um, pupils. So we'd see a lot of that, especially in rural areas where it's um, mixed class schools. So um, 
when we do our classroom visits, it's whoever or however many people are in the school we can visit. So you, generally it is fifth, it is aimed at fifth and sixth, but you can adjust the lesson plans. And then so long as we know who we're speaking to when we come into the classroom, like if we're speaking to third to fifth class, or we're speaking, you know, to first class to sixth class, then we can have our presentations um, appropriately adjusted as well. And of course, when we go to the classroom, when we go to the field trip, you know, you may only be a school of 25 children or you might have a class of 25 children. So if you tell us your numbers, then we can accommodate as many as we can safely um, at the Riverside. But I suppose this year with COVID restrictions, you know, we're probably down to maybe pods of 15 or pods of whatever you have in your school. Great stuff. And another one in here, Catherine. Um, on field trips, is the necessary insurance covered by IFI for the school? I don't know the answer to that question. Maybe Lorraine, if you're there, you might know the answer to that. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, it is covered by IFI's insurance taking the school out, but it's also covered by the school insurance. So it's kind of double coverage. Schools would have insurance for field trips as well. Yeah, okay, there's another one here. If there is no river nearby, can the river be bought indoors to students for the field trip? That's a good question. Yeah, a great question. So like I said, if there's no river nearby and you do want to maybe get a bus to go to a river, we can certainly bring the um, fish and the insects into the school. And, you know, it's a great learning opportunity as well, like I said earlier. So kids do love um, us to bring them to school. And it's, it's good too, in a way that if you go to the, the for the field trip to the river, it may only be your fifth and sixth class. But if we bring it to the school, you know, generally we'd say we might be there for an hour, an hour and a half, but we'd be there for most of the day as every teacher walks past the door and they bring every kid they can find in to have a look at an insect or a look at a fish. Thanks.